back in the day when it comes to gangster styles, it was mainly uh, kids around the block representing their block that they're from, their street. And I know that when it comes to uh, new writers, even old writers, we try to learn that old style as well, along with what the current style is. In the Philadelphia tagging scene, everyone kind of looked to inspiration off of everyone. And like from there, that's what kind of evolved it to what we know what it is today. My name is John, also known as Avis. I was born and raised in Southwest Philadelphia, and I write graffiti. As I was growing up, I was always interested in art. Uh, I always doodled, you know, in between classes up until like even the present day. And it was up until like the sophomore year of high school where I bumped into a uh, break dancer who just gone into gra graffiti, or I guess technically in the community, we refer to it as writing. Graffiti did start in uh, Philadelphia in the 1960s. Granted, it didn't start off and it's the style that we all know today, but it did evolve into what we commonly know as Tony. It's not that much wall space. You, you would have to sometimes go over people, but it depends on who you go over. Like you can't just go over anyone you see, even if it's dissed by like a little bit. I know that sometimes when you, when you find a spot and like, let's say, let's say there's like a decent piece that has like a bit of like neighborhood writings all over it, like a, like a penis on it or like some weird like drawing illustrations. because like usually whoever I go over, I make sure that it's not part of like, if they've been around for a while, cause that plays a huge effect or their piece is better what I'm gonna do. I'll make sure not to go over that either. So you kind of like get in a sense of an idea of who you should go over, who you should. And I feel like that's like the biggest thing too. Cause I know a lot of times, a lot of newer guys, they would come in, see something that's really old. Granted, it might not be good because it's old, but they find out as a clear cut way, it's like, oh yes, let me go over that. But when it comes to like Philly graffiti, you're not supposed to go over a lot of old stuff, if you know who it is. And that's kind of like the hard thing is, cause like a lot of times when you first started off, who are you gonna know who these people are? Because a lot of times their names have been passed in your word of mouth. There is no like um, Google encyclopedia of Philadelphia writers of that are like, that made an impact in the history back in the 1980s. Graffiti does make a city look trashy, but like, uh, but at the same time, it's like also kind of like cool because it's kind of like they followed the the history of what Philadelphia, how Philadelphia had been writing, they kind of like stuck with it. In a weird way, uh, Philadelphia has utilized graffiti artists, or at least back in the day, to use their efforts to more like constructive stuff. Like for example, uh, Philadelphia Mural Arts was originally the anti-graffiti unit because graffiti used to be a huge problem back in the day. People think that writing can be destructive because a lot of times when it comes to, um, let's say you own a, a mom and pop shop close to downtown or in a, a very concentrated neighborhood, you might face issues of people writing on your storefront or even just writing on the glass.
there's certain materials that people use where it stains the glass itself. It's a weird battle because like as a writer, you want your stuff to last. And when it comes to using these chemicals, it will last, but at the expense of the owner. And I feel like that's like a lot of times like a gray area where like a lot of people be like, oh yeah, graffiti is destructive. And like, yeah, I can definitely see that. But it also depends on how you go about it too.